Hello folks, welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar and from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. Uh, we are as usual uh, in front of this very nice motivating background image of this rover on Mars and uh, we expect that we are moving forward towards uh, learning how to analyze and design algorithms that are going to drive autonomous systems such as these. So without any further delay, uh, I'm going to sort of try to recap what we have done until last time. So at the end of the last week's lectures, we started looking at stability in the sense of Lyapunov. Right? And in the beginning of it, we sort of tried to look at what is the notion of uh, existence of unique solutions, which is sort of a critical, uh, you know, ingredient for us to be even able to talk about um, existence of uh, stability and so on and so forth and other properties of any differential equation for that matter. All right. Uh, once we understood that we required these Lipschitz notions in order to talk about stability and talk about existence and uniqueness we went on to define the notion of an equilibrium and especially the notion of an isolated equilibrium we try to understand why this isolated equilibrium is such a key concept in studying stability yeah and the fact that non isolated equilibrium doesn't even allow us to talk about convergence and uh, comparison with one specific equilibrium point because there are so many of them arbitrarily close to each other all right now so this is what or this is why you know this was a uh, such an important notion okay uh, once we had under our belt the notion of um, an isolated equilibrium we were ready to talk about the first definition which was stability in the sense of Lyapunov yeah and this is in the format of very very standard format of an epsilon delta definition all right so this is the standard format for any stability definition uh, that we will be seeing now or in the future okay uh, so what is it? it it sort of comes as a challenge question that is you know uh, given every epsilon positive or even any epsilon positive i should be able to generate a delta which depends on possibly the initial time and the epsilon and this is also a positive number such that if my initial conditions start within a delta ball of the equilibrium then my state remains within the delta ball of the equilibrium or remains within the epsilon ball of the equilibrium for all time all right and we do this very nice you now illustrative picture in order to understand this notion we also understood that delta has to be less than or equal to epsilon for things to make sense okay so once we had the notion of Lyapunov stability right uh, understood right we want to uh, look at the notion of uniform stability so what is it so this is where we begin today so what do we have in uniform stability the only difference between Lyapunov stability and uniform stability or uniform stability in the sense of Lyapunov versus stability is the word uniform of course right so we added a new word a new qualifier if you may so that's of course one new thing and what does it entail this uniformity this uniformity is with respect to the initial time right so if you look at the deltas that you get in each of these definitions there is a difference that the delta in the case of uniform stability is independent of the initial time okay and so this is what is the difference everything else is exactly the same given an epsilon 
there has to exist a delta which now depends only on epsilon not on t naught such that if my initial conditions are within the delta ball my solutions remain within the epsilon ball of the equilibrium for all time so this statement and this statement are absolutely the same if you notice there is no difference between the two the only difference lies in the delta right wherein here it was dependent on t naught and here it was independent of t naught okay and we will of course see uh, when such a situation arises we will look at examples uh, subsequently of when we have one property and not the other okay now one of the important things to remember is that we say that the equilibrium is unstable okay if it's neither stable nor uniformly stable if the equilibrium xe does not have either of these two properties right then we say that our equilibrium is unstable okay then we say that our equilibrium is unstable okay so in order to sort of illustrate these properties let us look at an example the very very standard textbook example from the book by vidya sagar this is from vidya sagar's book yeah you can find it in this uh, book of nonlinear systems by Vidya Sagar all right this is in the chapter where you know where stability and other notions are in fact being defined okay a very 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 standard example in that sense so what is it it's a very simple scalar system right you're given x uh, as a scalar quantity so I will sort of explain I'll sort of explain x is in the, our real numbers okay and you have some initial condition of course x t0 is just your initial condition I'm not denoting it's not denoted here as anything else but x t0 all right so it's x dot is 6t sine t minus twice t times x okay so and then of course like I said it's a real number with some initial condition at initial time now if I uh, once I've chosen an initial time and this initial state of course I can integrate this right? this is very easy to integrate because this is simply dx over x and this is 6t sine t minus twice t dt right and I can of course integrate both sides yeah so from x t0 to x t on the left and t0 to t on the right so this is not very difficult to do I can actually carry out this integration and in fact the outcome of this integration is this expression okay so the outcome of this integration is exactly this expression you see okay let's not be very worried so the left hand side uh, actually gave me log x right so so basically from from this guy I got log x yeah log x divided by x t0 okay therefore I got an exponential here right because I had log x divided by x t0 and therefore I got an exponential here when I took it to the other side and the integral of this was simply 6 sine t minus uh, 60 cosine t minus t squared and this is corresponding to the initial time right? this is corresponding to the upper limit t and this is corresponding to the lower bound t naught okay, very standard in a definite integral okay so now it's a rather long expression but not too complicated you can actually take a derivative with respect to time of this guy and you can see that it satisfies your differential equation okay it's not difficult to see that it does satisfy your differential equation okay excellent right right so um, I would advise you to do that diligently take a derivative here 
and verify that it satisfies the differential equation. One thing is obvious if I plug in t0 instead of t here, the exponential term is in fact 0. Therefore, exp of 0 is 1. And so xt0 is xt0. That is, it's verifying that initial condition. And after taking a derivative, I can also verify that it satisfies the differential equation. Therefore, this is indeed the correct solution, right? the unique solution. All right? This is important to us that this is a unique solution. Okay. So what is the equilibrium in this case? What is the equilibrium? We didn't discuss that. Let's see. Let me try to get rid of this. Yeah. So what is the equilibrium? X sub e is zero. Okay, so zero is the equilibrium. Because you can see the right hand side is zero exactly at x equal to zero for all time. Okay, so zero is the equilibrium. Great. So I can succinctly write this quantity right as this. Okay. Now what have I done here? What I have done here is I have denoted I have defined a quantity gamma as x of minus 6 sine t0 plus 6 t0 cosine t0 plus t0 squared. Okay. So notice, so this is what I have done. I have defined a new quantity gamma okay which is just taking the initial time component of the exponential pulling it out okay and notice that this is a constant whenever t0 is fixed once i fix the initial time gamma is a constant so therefore i have written it as such okay so i have x t0 multiplying gamma and now only a exp exponential containing only a function of the time t okay so again let's go back to our remember uh, we talked about this abuse of notation right you see that the solution does depend on initial time and also on t and also on initial state okay however when we sort of write the left hand side we just say that it's a function of time t okay so this is an abuse of notation but we've already understood what this is and therefore we are okay with it but we do remember in our minds that the right hand side does depend on the initial time as well as the initial state. Okay. All right. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, once I have this sort of assignment, this definition, and I have this relatively succinct um, expression for x of t the solution, uh, I want to remind myself that there exists some finite time capital T beyond which this is negative right why why is this because T square dominates 60 cosine T and 6 sine T yeah, so this is just a property of the functions involved. If you look at this minus t squared, this is a quadratic term in t, so it's going to grow really fast. Whereas this one is a linear term in t with a cosine, which is of course going to fluctuate only between plus minus one. So it's just a linear increase in time. And this is just a sinusoid term, which is going to stay between plus minus six. And this is of course going to stay between plus minus 60 but this term is going to rapidly increase as t squared okay so beyond a certain time you can be sure that this function is going to become negative because this is there is a minus sign attached to the t squared okay so therefore there exists some capital t such that beyond that time this quantity is negative okay so this is a rather critical thing for us okay so what do we do we take this time and we find the supremum of this function 
okay what is it so we say that m equal to 0 and we denote m as so this is actually a definition we denote m as the supremum from initial time to cap t of this quantity 6 sin t minus 60 cosine t minus t squared now why do I find the supremum only over this time because I know that this quantity is possibly positive only in this window only in this window is this quantity possibly positive beyond it it is definitely negative okay so if I try to plot this function just to make things more clear if I try to plot this function I can expect it to look like so this is the time cap t okay, so this is this function right here on the y-axis okay it should be evident that at t equal to 0 what happens ah let's see in fact let me actually be careful ah uh, I should not have done that okay so let's say that this is let's say this is t equal to t0 at t equal to t0 say it's some positive quantity yeah, I don't know what it is yeah so this is as you can understand this term is exactly going to be 6 sine t0 minus 6 t0 cosine t0 minus t0 square that's what is this guy all right and then beyond that say it's positive for some more time okay and then I have this peak this peak is what is m then it drops and I know for sure that beyond this time cap t it is definitely becoming negative therefore I need to consider the supremum of this function only in this window okay if I want to find the supremum or the maximum value of this function for all time okay if I want to find the maximum value of this function for all time I need only to look at this window t0 to capital T right? and that's what I do that's what I do I look at only this window t0 to capital T okay great so I know that this function is definitely below m now what I claim is that if I choose an if I'm given an epsilon positive I claim that a valid Delta is this guy I claim this is a valid Delta okay I claim this is a valid Delta why why is that this is true because if you assume that your initial condition is Delta away from the origin okay what does that mean that means that my absolute value of x0 is less than delta which is equal to epsilon over gamma e to the power m okay then what can I say about the solutions let's look at the solutions right here I'm going to write right here okay. so absolute value of xt I'm taking absolute values on both sides and I'm going to freely use the triangle inequality so this is going to be equal to gamma well gamma x t0 x of this whole thing right so absolute value of this whole quantity right? but I know for sure that this is less than or equal to absolute value of gamma absolute value of x t0 times the absolute value of this whole guy by my usual triangle inequality now I know for sure 
that this guy is upper bounded by m and because of what i just how m is defined this guy is up bounded exactly by m okay so what do i know i know that this is less than equal to also notice that gamma is basically you know gamma is basically an exponential of some quantity right so gamma is basically exponential of some quantity so therefore it is always positive so i can get rid of this then i have absolute value of x t naught and this is capital m okay this is capital m now once i have this you see so there is i mean i have not been this is not very carefully done here this is actually this should be x t 0 because that is what we are using okay this is what x t 0 this is what we have been using all right so i have once i reach this point that x of t is less than gamma m x t 0 that is here okay I can substitute for absolute value of x t 0 which is chosen to be less than delta right this guy so once I substitute this here what do I get the gamma e m cancels out and I get that x t is less than epsilon exactly as we required exactly as we required okay so great so we have been able to show that given an epsilon I can find a delta such that if my initial conditions start within the delta ball my solution remains within the epsilon ball okay the important thing to remember is that the delta and hence gamma depends on t0 yeah so in the definition of delta i have a gamma and if you notice the gamma was defined as such and this is dependent on t0 and therefore delta is also dependent on t0 okay so what have we shown until now we have shown that until this point if I see let me be careful here until this point we have shown stability of zero in the sense of Lyapunov okay in the sense of Lyapunov now what I want you to notice now okay so we have already shown stability so the next question of course is is it uniformly stable yeah, because those are the only two definitions we've done so those are the only two things we can in fact test okay so the next question is is it uniformly stable right so what I would like you to notice is that the only dependence of delta to t0 comes from gamma okay that's the only way so we look at gamma itself so we know that gamma is this expression now what can I say about gamma as t0 goes to infinity as t0 becomes really large you can see that gamma also goes to infinity as t0 goes to infinity gamma goes to infinity this was sort of obvious and expected because the sign of t square is opposite in these two terms this is very standard when you do a definite integral right? so what happens is t0 squared again the quadratic term dominates every other term so if I push my initial time larger and larger then my t0 squared dominates everything else and the exponential also goes to infinity in fact very fast yeah so if t0 goes to infinity gamma t0 also goes to infinity so this is something you should remember now what we are claiming is that we cannot choose a uniform delta independent of t0 all right so and and why we say that we say that because 
as T0 becomes large, gamma goes to infinity. Okay, so let's see. Let's see why this is. Let's try to understand just by some crude example. Okay, why this is. Okay, what, what am I saying? I'm saying that uh, the delta we chose was epsilon over gamma e to the power m. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry. Did I? I think there was a slight error here. This is not gamma m. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. Here it should not have been gamma m, but this should have been gamma e to the power m. Okay, because the exponential was there. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So that's there was an error there. That's okay. All right. Now the delta we chose was epsilon over gamma e to the power m. Okay, now, now what are we saying that we cannot choose a uniform delta for all initial time. Okay, so why are we saying this? We know one thing for sure that um, as uh, beyond a certain time, beyond say t0 greater than or equal to some cap t, uh, gamma of t0 increasing function okay gamma of t0 is an increasing function this is not difficult to again claim right why because if you see the t0 square is dominating right? so beyond a certain time uh, this entire quantity right this entire gamma quantity this entire quantity in the exponent of gamma okay is going to become positive and remain positive and this it will continue to increase okay so is going to be an increasing function okay another way of looking at it would be to sort of try to take a derivative of this exponent and confirm it all right, which is also not a difficult thing to do. So if I take the derivative, also I can confirm, right? So what is the derivative here? Very quickly, um, this will be uh, of of this exponent. So I'm trying to take a derivative of this guy. Uh, d d t is um, six cos t zero minus six cos t zero plus 6 cos t0 okay minus 6 t0 sin t0 plus twice t0 okay so here these two will cancel out and i'm left with just this much okay twice t0 minus 6t0 sin t0 all right so let's try to see what happens here is this going to be always increasing let me be careful here before i claim this uh, this is uh, going to be t0 sorry t0 so this is going to be t0 times 2 minus 6 sine t0 i see so this is not evidently increasing is it hmm. let's see if i have missed something here 6 cos t0 plus 6 cosine t0 minus 6 t0 sine t0 yeah that seems about right seems about right plus twice t0 okay and this is going to sort of be subtracted by this quantity okay uh, no this is not evidently increasing unless i'm missing something all right okay so this is something i need to verify so 
um, in any case we are sort of um, almost at the end of the time for uh, this lecture so what we will do is we will sort of continue our discussion on whether this is uniformly stable or not in the next lecture all right so anyway what have we seen today so what we have uh, seen today is um, the definition of uniform stability which is slightly different from stability in the sense that it is uniform with respect to the initial time the delta doesn't rest depend on initial time and we started to look at an example a very nice example where we could actually solve the differential equation and verify stability at this point we are now trying to check whether the system is uniformly stable or not and this we will complete next time so that is it folks for this time we will meet again soon thank you